Hello again, everybody. Back again with a bit of a strange one this time. Just to be complete, or try to be complete, recently I was having a lot of problems, start problems, hot run problems, and I thought it was a bunch of things, and some things got replaced, and yeah, they needed to be replaced, but it didn't solve the issue. Issue was, truck would start fine, cold or hot, starts nice and quick, runs fine, until it gets hot, still starts very quick hot, good hot starts, no problem. But then you go drive it, it runs okay, but then you go to slow down for a stop and it would act like it wants to stall, still running, but you know, like 200 RPM instead of 800. And then a couple seconds actually totally stall out. If I didn't turn the key off and then try to restart, it would not start. Or would try to start and then act like it was kicking back and then would kick fuel vapor out the carburetor and come out under the hood and that's embarrassing but if i turn the key off and then back on and then hit start it would start immediately almost like an electrical reset very strange so i suspected the module the hei module timing issues i've been through the mill on this but nothing's, and I, I checked for a few problems with the car. I checked it. Nothing solved the problem. So now I'm figuring it's the coil because it's about the last thing on the list. This is a quality one I got seven years ago. It's a standard uh, UC12. And I learned a lesson with that a while back. Get a quality coil if you're going to use the HEI conversion or just get a quality coil in general. You know, you use the original Toyota Igniter. In any case, I uh, got a new one coming from Rock Auto. But I thought I'd go ahead and pull this out and test, and I'll show a little test on it. And I've got the uh, specs here. It's a 78, so the primary should be 1.3 to 1.7 ohms. So we set this set our meter down to the 200 ohm range. And we touch our leads together. Let that settle down. You have to do this with the cheap meters because you have to account for the resistance in your lead wires. If it's not a, a self-zeroing meter, which is the more expensive ones, of course. But since most people have these cheapies, give away $6 Harbor Freight ones. Everybody's got it. So that's why I'm showing it to you. So we got 1.1 ohms. So, you measure the two inputs, positive, negative. It doesn't matter which way these are. It makes no difference at all. So, we'll just clip those on there. And we'll let it settle down. And we're showing 2.5 ohms. So, minus the 1.1, that's 1 1.4 ohms. So, that's right in the scale for primary. Now next, what you do is you put this up to the 20,000 ohm range, right there. And you don't have to worry about touching these together to get a baseline reading because this is like 10 thousands of ohms. An extra ohm or two isn't going to make any difference. Leave one of your leads hooked up to the positive or the negative. Again, it doesn't matter which. Put your other lead down in the high tension or high voltage center terminal. You may have to scratch it around a, a bit in case there's corrosion down there. Make sure it's clean. And we have 9,070 ohms, 9,060 ohms, something like that. 9.07. You have to add a zero for the for the thousand range because again this will go from zero to 20,000 on a 20,000 range. So we're looking like, okay, we'll take the lower just for the heck of it. Or not. <laughs> 9,070 ohms. 9,060 ohms. Whatever. Okay. Leave that there. And our spec for the secondary is 6,500 to 10,500. Now, okay. 9,000 seems to be a little high. 
if you add these two together, you get 17,000. You divide it by two, you get 8,500. That's the middle of the range. Rule of thumb is when you get within like 10% of the range, especially on the higher end, the middle range you usually don't worry about. You get within 10% of the higher end, which is like 94, 50, 9,500 ohms, that secondary circuit is getting extra resistance. That means the insulation inside is breaking down inside the coil. Now, here's the important thing. This is measured cold. Heat and vibration are the biggest killers of ignition coils. As you start the engine, you get engine heat in the engine bay, engine compartment. It can be up towards a 200 degrees Fahrenheit or sometimes a little bit more in there. This has a metal case. It's filled with oil. The oil is supposed to help dissipate any heat from inside. But living in a hot environment like that, eventually it's going to break down. It's going to take time. They all do. This one lasted seven years, which is a lot better than the five months I got from the cheap Chinese coil. No names mentioned. Thank you. But what I'm going to do is a hot test. And what I've got is a nice hair dryer. It kicks out a lot of heat. You could use a heat gun if you want. I'm just going to direct this at the coil for a while, leave it hooked up on this secondary circuit and see if that reading rises. I bet you it will. I'll go ahead and click this on and I will fast forward it so you don't have to sit there for the next five, 10 minutes just staring at it. I know it's good ASMR, but eh, not gonna do it. So. Let's, let's see what we get.
Okay, so that's exactly 10 minutes of runtime on that heat. You can see what's going on here. It's already up in that past 10% range on the upper level. It's at about 9,500. Again, that 10% level is like 9,450. Just doing the math. Oof. And I saw one spike of over 10,000 in there. I don't know if you caught it. And there was another spike over over 11,000. Yeah, those are definite stalls right there. The resistance just goes too high. Not enough juice gets out to get enough good spark to light the fuel and air, fuel air mixture. Boom, stall. No good. So, now I got it turned off. Now I'm just going to let it sit there and cool for about five minutes. And I'm just going to, again, I'll do a fast forward on this just to see what the numbers do. We're at 9,500 now. 9,510. <laughs> okay, fast forward time. Now, isn't that interesting? That's mm, six mi no, seven minutes of cooldown time. And it just kept going up. It actually added over about 150 extra ohms. We're already more than 200 ohms past the replace point. It should be like the top end should be 9450. That's you should replace it by then because if it's 9450 cold, it's just going to go up when it gets hot. And you've just seen. And I, I took all the heat off it. It's been sitting here with nothing running on it. And it just keeps going up. That will get you stranded. But I wanted to show this because, one, it's not the typical bad ignition coil fail. Usually, it gets hot, it stalls, or it, it, it'll, it'll run, it's, it's hot, you'll shut it off, and it won't start when it's hot. you got to sit and wait for 30, 45, 60 minutes for it to cool down or throw some water or ice on the coil and cool it off and then it'll restart. That's the typical way the coil fails. It's, it gets hot and that secondary just rises and rises in resistance and it just can't push enough juice out to get a good spark. I'm, I'm sitting, <laughs> as I'm sitting here, you would say added 20 ohms. Crazy. I don't blame the coil. I mean, it's, it's standard motor parts. It's good stuff. This is actually a... Um, a thing where it's a it's a better part so it's not going to fail in the normal way it'll keep working enough so maybe it won't leave you stranded but eh. here we go it's just what happens they do wear out i mean that copper wire will break down because it handles a lot of current it's at least twenty thousand volts sometimes more if you're running the, the higher energy um like hei modules and things like that pertronics whatever it's going to happen uh, i might have another video about this as, as far as the coils relate to the uh the modules because i've learned a few things about that but i wanted to show this so you can see look it's still going up still trying to go up 
because I've never seen anybody document this before. And it's, it's such a, a strange fail. I just wanted to get it out there so to let people know, yeah, this can happen. And if this is what's happening to you, this is what's going on. The secondary in that coil is, is starting to fail. So there you go. I just wanted to show you. I uh, appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate the subscribers. I, I love you guys who subscribe. You just make me smile. I'll have more videos coming. I know I've been slacking, but hey, life is life. You got to do what you got to do. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you later.